the knob on the end of the breech, sometimes known as a ball end or a cascable. This is the shape that I'm going for again, going back to my swarf covered drawing now. So the ball will be coming round and then I'll put this little knob on it here just to finish it off because it'll sit flat against the breech of the, the cannon. So I've got a 18mm uh, bar stock in the three jaw chuck. Now getting a wee bit dusty, needing a clean after all the turning of the cannon. So why is it sticking out so far? Well, only because my tool, the tool post, what I'm doing is I'm coming round the back now to cut the, the ball. And I don't really want the three jaw chuck anywhere near this. So normally you would have your uh, bar as close to the three jaw chuck as possible to stop flexing. But it's that big and uh, ugly, it's not going to bend any at all. So I'll part it off, turn it round before I do any final polishing, stick it back in the 3 chuck, take my centre, I'll change the lace centre, put the centre drill, drill the end of it, drill it out to 5mm, then tap it out to 6mm, so I can put a little uh, M6 stud in the end, so it can go into the end of the cannon. Another day passes, so on to the trunnions. Um, two trunnions, normally cast in one piece when they're made, but uh, I started off with 50mm bar. I would have had to start off with about an 80mm section and an awful lot of machining. So, as I noted earlier on, I machined these in and I milled them out 7mm deep. So what I did here is made these pins to replicate the trunnion. Um, I made them 6.9 millimetres deep from there to there, so there's a little bit of a clearance. And they were 15 millimetres in diameter, the hole. So I made it 15.03 uh, diameter. Then I want a five millimetre step, so when it sits against the gun carriage, and then 15 millimetres here, that's the, the wood, the oak, that I'm going to make the gun carriage out of, that's in the next video. So, there's a lot of measurements to remember when you've got a bit of bar in there, so top tip for you. I've got my shadow board, and what I do is I just leave my pen on top there, my uh, white dry free board. So, I put all my measurements on there, then just rub them off as and when, so... As you'll see there, that's the pin that I made, so the 0 0.03 of a millimetre bigger for the interference fit, 0 0.1 of a millimetre smaller when it goes into the gun, the 5 mil sticking out, then the 15 mil that goes in the wooden carriage, then I've left it a 13 mil on the other end, so that'll stick out. So, top tip there, shadow board right beside your lathe is always very handy as well. So, next stage is okay it's an interference fit but how i'm going to get them in so when the wife's away i'm going to stick this in the oven at uh, as high as it goes um and then i'll put the gas blow lamp on it then in a box to heat it as as much as i can and i'll stick these in the fridge it's not going to do much taking them in the fridge but it's about 20 degrees here today so this will take them down to about five and then in the hydraulic press line them up, squeeze them in with a little bit of Loctite. It'd probably be too hot for the Loctite, but I'll put a tiny little bit on anyway. It shouldn't need it. We'll see when, I, when it comes to it with the heat. I'll try a bit of Loctite, just dabbing it on the inside of the board or something to see if it instantly just disappears or not with the heat. But if it doesn't, I'll use it. If it does, I won't. So I've tried to fit them in. They, they won't quite fit. They want to go in, so I know they're... They're pretty good size-wise, so they should press in. Time will tell. Trunnions pressed in okay. Took about two hours for the thing to cool down. It was that hot after. But uh, needed a little bit of a rub with the scotch bright again just to get the colour back. But, yeah, they pressed in lovely. And there's no chance they're going to ever come out now, so that's good. Next stage... Drilling the vent field, so I'm going to put it in here. So if you recollect, I drilled 10 millimeters in, and the 10 millimeter mark comes to about there, 
that's another 10 millimetres, and that's another 8 millimetres, so we've got 18 millimetres in. Um, what I did when I took the drill in with a lathe, I drilled to here, which is just short of the vent field. And the reason I did that was I want to drill this vent field uh, without the fear of snapping a drill bit, because if I snap a drill bit in there, it's curtains. Uh, there's no way of me getting that out without making a mess here. So, we have some cannon fuse. I think, uh, measured at 1.88 millimetres, got it in there. So, I was going to drill it out to 2 millimetres. That one's 1.97 mil. But this one, my 1.9 mil drill, is bang on 1.9, so I thought, well, why not? 1.88, it's a little bit of a squeeze to get it in. It just means more pressure is going to stay in here when it does go pop. Um, and if need be, I can always use the 2 mil drills. So I'll centre punch that. I'll get uh, some soft wadding around this. And I was going to use the pillar drill for a start, uh, then use my battery drill after it was centred a wee bit. And the reason for using the battery drill is I can set the clutch on it. So if I do hit anything tougher, it's going to click in. And again, no no chance of this tiny little drill bit getting broken. Uh, once I've drilled that to the depth, I'll mark it with a little bit of tape to get it to the centre. Um, approximately that deep. Um, okay, keep it well lubricated as well when I'm doing it. But uh, So when I get it to approximately the centre, I'll take my D bit in here again and then just I should be able to feel it biting into where this hole has come in. So that should be enough. Next stage, drilling. That's the drilling complete. So everything went okay. Drilled it out to 1.9 mil, no problem. Well, it's never as easy as that, is it? So that's the fuse wire fitting in now. So there's a 1.9mm drill there. Tried it in. Of course, it wouldn't fit. 2mm, wouldn't fit. 2.1, it just fitted, but it's quite tight. Because when you cut it, it splays out ever so slightly. It doesn't stay as neat as you would think. So 2.2mm. And that was it, fine. So what I'll do now is I'll just put a little countersink in that. It just looks as though then when you've been filling it with gunpowder, it has something to light like they would have it originally. Um, drilled it down to the depth, so I've made this little gauge of welding wire. So that's actually half the width. It pops in quite the thing, full depth. So now when I drill in, I should be able to feel that D bit biting the end of the breach here. Final job then for the cannon section before I make the carriage is to ream it out. So you'll see a slight problem I have here. Adjustable reamer fits in but it only fits in to about there. So what I'm going to have to do is okay it's all case hardened but I'm going to have to drill a hole in here and make an extension so I can take the reamer down to this end. So I need at least this much of a, an extension on. So what I'll do is I'll make an extension of a bit of mild steel, turn a little section for the end to go on here, then I'll put grub screws in the side to bite onto this flat section and hopefully if I can get a drill or something to indent into that, that should be sufficient to hold it in and hopefully the reamer doesn't get stuck in there. It, it fits quite the thing already. So I can adjust these just a cheap reamer off eBay. Further up the shaft and the flutes actually pull out further because they go on a little slide here. So that's it fully in at the moment. Uh, starts at 15 mil and goes up to, I don't know, 16, 17 mil in total. So yeah, last job hopefully goes okay. I'll hand ream this. I won't uh, do it with the, the battery drill. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Last job.